Alrighty then, well, let's dig into it. So if you look at this slide right here, this is what we've been working on. And this is a view called orthographic. And you can see that we made it just by using parallel lines. And it looks okay, but you've probably noticed that it looks a little bit funny. It looks a little bit odd. And that's because there's no perspective in it. Let's take a look now if we were to use perspective. In other words, things getting smaller as they move away from you. Okay, so with this one, you'll see that all those parallel lines actually go to a vanishing point. They get smaller the further away that they are. Now, this idea of using lines to create perspective was created by these bunch of smart fellows right here back in the Italian Renaissance. And so what they discovered is that you could have a horizon line and if you brought everything back to a vanishing point, then you could get a realistic sort of, you know, illusion of space. And so they used it to make many, many paintings, including this one that you've probably seen before. Now you might say like, well, okay, that, that's all fine and good, but does it really work in the real world? Does it work with the photograph? Okay, well here's a rather complex photograph. And as you can see, if we go to the horizon, right, creating that horizon line, finding the vanishing point, all those lines will lead to that vanishing point. Now, another thing to look for, though, is that the vertical lines, in other words, the lines that go up and down, they stay up and down. Basically, it all starts with this, a horizon line. So as we look out over the ocean here, we can see as far as the eye can see, and you see it goes flat. And then with one point perspective, we just find a spot right in the middle of that. And we make everything disappear to that as if it was a boat that was going out on the water, out, 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 until it vanished. So the thing to remember is that when we see a picture like this, where everything goes back to the vanishing point, remember that the up and down lines stay up and down, like in this picture right here. That's something in particular that we're going to watch for and look at. So let's go ahead and get started on our first exercise. So for our perspective exercises, I want to use the long format paper, okay, and opposed to the shorter format paper that we've been using. Don't worry about keeping it in your backpacks or folders or whatever. I'll have portfolios ready for you so that we can keep these things and other artwork now in the classroom. Okay. Now, as you know, I oftentimes don't use a ruler myself, but for these perspective drawings, a ruler might be a good idea. I don't keep much in the way of rulers in the classroom because, you know, well, they just get destroyed anyways. But I actually prefer a paper ruler. So I'll just take a sheet of paper, folding it in half and half again, and that gives me a nice, good edge to draw on. I think that the paper ruler actually has a couple of advantages. One, it's always perfect and brand new. Two, is that you can mark on it. And three, is that on the end here, if you look, you've got a 90 degree corner right here. So you can make a right angle really easily. If you wanted to, you could even fold that carefully and get a nice 45 degree angle. Okay, or really any, any angle you wanted. All right, so let's do it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create that horizon line. And for the purposes of this exercise, what I want you to do is try and, try and draw as light as possible. Okay, so holding the pencil back at the end of the pencil here, just very lightly go ahead and draw that horizon line. You should barely see it on this tutorial. Okay, then what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and somewhere near the center, I want you to make a little dot right there. 
that's going to be our vanishing point. For our purposes right now, I want you to go ahead and I want you to label this. That line is going to be labeled the horizon line. So I want you to write that down. I want you to label it. This is the vanishing point. So I want you to label it. Of course, we won't always be doing that. That would be ridiculous. But for your sake of learning right now, I want you to do that. So let's go ahead and start making a few little boxes. All right, so I'm going to start by just going ahead and maybe drawing a little, a little line here. Try and draw pretty light. And here, just making a square. Oh, by the way, if I wanted to make a perfect square, remember what I was saying. You could use this paper ruler to measure very easily. So if I made this horizontal line just like this, put a little mark on the ruler right there, turning it, and that way I could get a line that was exactly the same length, and thus making a perfect square. Okay, good enough. And so then what I want you to do is I want you to take the corners and go ahead and draw those down to the vanishing point. So all the corners that you saw down to the vanishing point. Okay, so now you can use your ruler and make another horizontal line right here. That will be the back of your cube. And try and keep them parallel. That way. And this way. Now vertical. Those are terms you should learn as well. Up and down, that's vertical. Side to side, that's horizontal. Once you have it like this, your little cube in perspective, I want you to go ahead and darken in the lines that you need. I want you to keep for now those guidelines that you made, because what I want to see is that you made them reasonably light. You want to keep your guidelines really light because you're going to be doing a lot of erasing when you do things in perspective. Now, when you darken in your lines, I want you to do that without a ruler. Because remember, people come into my class not even being able to draw a straight line. Well, we're going to practice, right? So just drawing a straight line, free-handed, over the guidelines that you made should be fairly easy. I feel that's important because when you draw with the ruler, it looks very mechanical. And the point is not to make really mechanical-looking drawings, but to make really beautiful drawings like you saw in Da Vinci's Last Supper, or Raphael's The School of Athens. Those are the two paintings that I showed you at the very beginning of the, of the lesson. Okay, so what I want you to do now is make a total of six of these little squares, just going all around the page, so some above and some below. Okay, as you're making these, you can see they don't have to be uh, perfectly straight, like up or down, that kind of thing. I have some mine at an angle. They don't have to be perfect squares either. I just wanted to show you that you could make things measured and perfect if you wanted to, which is something to really know when it comes to doing accurate drawings using linear perspective. Or, trust me, there's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do. The other thing is to keep the lines that are meant to be parallel, parallel. So for instance, these ones are going back to the vanishing point. Okay, fair enough. But these ones would stay parallel, wouldn't they? So watch for that because the same psychological sort of quirks that can happen when you're drawing, you know, those forms like we were drawing before, the cubes and whatnot freehand, could happen here too. 
So if you're ever in doubt, so let's say, let's say for this, for instance, was like, oh, wait a minute, that just doesn't look right. You could always measure. You could say like, okay, that doesn't seem right. So what's the difference between, let's say, the one point, if I was to carry this out here, say like, okay, it's that long. And by the time I get over here, it's like, oh my, that's very different, isn't it? So you could measure when in doubt. And that's probably always a good thing to do, especially when you're trying to do accurate drawings, like with the linear perspective. So just like the exercises that we did when we did the drawing intensive, I want you to label these very precisely. So this is perspective drawing one. One point perspective using a horizon line and a vanishing point. Because that's the nature of the lesson. Remember, I do this for a reason. Because when you verbalize, when you get vocabulary, when you know the name of things, then you understand them much more deeply. Okay, and also, Give me your last name, your first name, the period number, and the exercise number, which is usually the same as the drawing number. Okay, that just makes it a lot easier for me. And the other thing, too, is that, you know, following direction. There's going to be a lot of direction in these um, perspective lessons.